Salutations, beautiful people. I'm Matt Lieberman, a.k.a. Lil Funyuns, a.k.a. The King of Kale, a.k.a. Sleepaway Champ. No one calls me those things, but maybe it's time that we all start it, shall we? It's the end of 2015. It's been an amazing year for television, between cable, pay cable, and streaming services all upping their game, and even broadcast limping along with a few great shows. It was incredibly hard, but I figured out my top 10 TV series of 2015. Can you guess which ones they are? I bet it's not Gotham. It's not Gotham. Get the fuck out of here, Gotham, you piece of shit. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's do this. Okay, I'll admit, I've never been a huge Shonda Rhimes fan. I, I watched Grey's Anatomy for the first two seasons, largely because I was a teenager, and they had a lot of sex on that show. However, I have to give it up for How to Get Away with Murder. The show is like crack. It's twisty, turny, and frothy as hell. And it's never, ever boring, which, god damn, so many shows are boring that shouldn't be the strain. Season two is somehow even crazier than season one without jumping the shark, and it's the only show that has Viola Davis, whose portrayal of Annalise Keating is one of the most vulnerable yet commanding and powerful, intense performances on all of TV. Some shows are designed for binging and some just aren't. This one is designed to binge, binge, binge. It is that good. All of season one is available right now on Netflix and I highly recommend that you check it out. 2015 was the year of angst and nihilism invading my comedies, and no show did it better and more surprisingly than BoJack Horseman. This show is one of my biggest pleasant surprises of 2014, and they seriously upped their game in season two, mining character more effectively than maybe any animated show in memory. BoJack does some seriously reprehensible stuff in season two, and the show never quite lets him get away with it. He's always treated as human. Well, Horseman. You, you get the... Point. Let's not make this joke. Also, their skewering of Hollywood celebrity and the improv scene was beautiful to watch. Highly recommend this show. If you haven't seen it yet, go for it. Let's talk about Banshee for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, what the fuck is Banshee? Wake up! Banshee is a bullet of awesome to the head, a knife straight through the heart of boredom, and a hard right cross to the face of your TV. This is the most kick-ass, brutal, sexy, straight-up awesome show that you've never heard of. Probably because it airs on Cinemax, which has quietly become the most fascinating network to watch. In its third season, Banshee delivered the best fight scene in TV history, really, and one of the most visually inventive and gripping heist sequences in recent memory. It's a work of art, and the characters are all superbly well-written and performed. Watch this fucking show. You are missing out, okay? You can watch all of my reviews of seasons two and three of Banshee by clicking this annotation. Better Call Saul is just so much fun to watch. People who were expecting Breaking Bad were probably a little disappointed by this show, but that means they missed the point entirely. This meditation on brotherly love, guilt, duty, and disappointment was visually impressive, gripping, hilarious, and never, ever boring. Frankly, this is the kind of show that doesn't get made, and would never have gotten made if Breaking Bad wasn't so amazing. The more the show stepped out of Breaking Bad's shadow and stopped trying to be that show, the better that Better Call Saul became, and I cannot wait to watch Jimmy McGill find his inner monster in season two this winter. You can check out my reviews of season one by clicking right here. Let me say this right now. I was very disappointed by Marvel's Daredevil. That's not to say that it's a bad show, but my expectations for it were sky high, and it just did not meet them. Jessica Jones, on the other hand, blew my expectations out of the water, grabbed them, and slammed them into the ground because it is that fucking awesome. Many will jump at the chance to throw the show's quality at the feet of David Tennant, whose nimble performance is a marvel. But that would ignore the show's brilliant arc and world building, the well-rounded characters, and the subtle, nimble feminism that permeates every frame of this show. I can't believe that I'm putting the Nick at number five. I can't. The quality is still just as impressive, but that's how fierce the competition is this year. Let me say this. This is not hyperbole, this is fact. Every director of everything needs to mainline this series. Every frame is shot by director Steven Soderbergh, but it's not just that he shoots it, it's how he shoots it, why he shoots it. Every shot is deliberate to give you an in into a character's emotional state of mind. Everything is about revealing character as well as action, which nobody does on TV. The cast is pitch perfect and the production design is top notch. The Nick is Cinemax's crown jewel, an auteur driven character study that illuminates how our medical system and society became what they are. It's gripping, haunting, and always heartfelt. Watch this show. Mad Men's final farewell was damn near perfect and a fitting send off to one of the finest dramas 
ever to grace our screens. Creator Matthew Weiner could never give us a season that was going to please everyone. It's just impossible with a show this beloved. There were old faces that were never revisited and Joan's storyline in particular divided fans. However, I felt that they gave every character peace in a way that never felt hacky, corny, or forced and delivered one of the best finales ever on television. Bravo, Mad Men. I raise a glass of scotch in your honor and I wish you the fondest of farewells in your journey. You can watch all of my reviews of seasons five, six, and seven, part one and two by clicking right here. Transparent is far and away the best show on Amazon Prime and maybe the best half hour series anywhere right now. From creator Jill Soloway, this tale of the Pfefferman clan and its patriarch turned matriarch played expertly by Emmy winner Jeffrey Tambor is consistently moving, surprising, and full of joy and despair. I love these people as if I know them and the show makes me feel like I do. Season two just dropped on Amazon Prime and it's just as stellar and nuanced. If you want something different, heartbreaking, hilarious, and real, you need to watch this incredible series. Holy fucking shit do I love Fargo. Creator Noah Hawley just gets it. He gets it. He gets television. You won television, Noah Hawley. This show is just infinitely entertaining, scary, thrilling, and just straight up bonkers. Every time you think that this show can't out bonkers itself, it out bonkers is itself. I know that's not a word, but this show is so good, it deserves 50 new words created in its honor. Holy crap. I want to talk in detail about season two so badly with you right now, but to spoil even one second of this show would be a greater crime than any committed in this series. Just know that when you watch Fargo, you get drier than dry comedy soaked in buckets of blood with a perfect soundtrack and pitch perfect performances. Oh, I guess I could gush about this show all day long. May this series go on for 10 more years. God damn, God damn is it good. What do you want out of a TV show? For me, I want a show that's gonna move me, shock me, make me laugh and cry, maybe even in one hour. A show should be unforgettable, seared into your brain for a lifetime, and that show is The Leftovers. In season two, creator Damon Lindelof fixed all the kinks in the show's structure and delivered episode after episode of winning, exhilarating television. This show is a gut punch of raw human emotion, followed up with a salve of human warmth and a cold pack of despair, just for good measure. You never know exactly how you're gonna feel when you watch The Leftovers, but you will feel something. This show has higher ambitions than maybe any series I've ever seen, and it actually regularly achieves them. You can't ask for anything more than that. You owe it to yourself to catch up before the third and final season airs next year on HBO. Well, that's it, gang. I hope that you enjoyed my top 10. And, and believe me, there are many other shows that deserve to be on here, but there's only 10 spots. And I know you're probably mad that I didn't include this show, this show, this show, this show, or that show. But frankly, this is how I feel. Why don't you let me know your top 10 down in the comments below. And hey, enjoy the new year. I'm Matt Lieberman, and I will see you in 2016. And hey, why don't you let me know also down in the comments uh, what other TV-type videos you'd like to see in the future? Thanks for watching.